Hey guys, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I thought I would bring you along and show you what my days have been looking like lately with quarantine. I know a lot of you are probably having similar days where you're in the kitchen a lot of the day. So we're back in the kitchen today. I'm doing some cleanup of dishes from the night before, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of cooking and we're gonna do some more cleanup. And you'll see the video kind of evolved from where I originally started it and I filmed a little more footage so I'm hoping you'll enjoy just spending a little bit of my day with me. And if you've been struggling to get into your routines and stay, I also wanted this video to be maybe some encouragement to you, or if you have things you need to do now to clean up, maybe you could just turn this video on and let this be some motivation for you. Because I know for myself, I have things lined up that I'm wanting to do and things I wanna get done. And with Whitney being home for work right now, with the quarantine and so much cooking going on, it seems like my schedule is constantly changing and I keep getting interruptions. And you'll see a lot of that through this video. So I'm hoping that this will provide you with a little bit of encouragement if you're experiencing some of the same things so that you don't feel like you're alone. And also to know that even with that, it is possible to still have some order in your house. Right now, y'all know that my house is in a total state of disarray because of the move. We're still moving in that has gotten slowed way down I am gonna be doing a house tour for y'all soon even with the mess because y'all said y'all want to see it I'm gonna be filming that very soon and getting that video out to you even with the disarray in my house like I said with my last video keeping the kitchen clean and the living room is something that's very important to me so even though that means I'm spending a lot more time right now doing dishes and just kind of keeping up with that it's a high priority for me and I'm willing to let some other things go and slide a little bit in some of my other cleaning tasks right now. But I am working to get back into all the routines and get my cleaning schedule back where it needs to be. I just wanted to do these videos with you like this and take you along so you can see how I'm doing that and maybe it could help you to get some of these processes and schedules down for yourself. On this particular day, I just had a few things that were left from the night before that I had to take care of. So in the beginning of the video, you saw that I started by unloading the dishwasher and putting those dishes away. I do like to wash our dishes at night and then that way I can unload them in the morning and have the dishwasher ready to go for the day. It's just me and Whitney, so I don't always run the dishwasher every night but I'm running it a lot more lately these days than before because we're doing so much more cooking than we normally do. After the dishwasher was unloaded, I just washed the few dishes that I had in the sink. I had a few dishes that were left over from the cookies we had the night before that hadn't made it into the dishwasher. And then also Whitney's dish from breakfast where I'd fixed him some Greek yogurt with honey and granola. So I was just finishing up these, getting them in the dishwasher. And once I was done with that, then I was ready to put away the dishes that I had left out from the night before to let them dry and then also put away the pan that I had left over from the cookies. After washing all of the dishes in the sink, I just needed to put away the dishes that I had left out the night before to dry. Sometimes I leave dishes out to dry and sometimes I'll go ahead and put them away after I did the dishes at night. It really just depends on the day. I rarely leave dirty dishes in the sink at night, but sometimes I do just leave out the dishes that needed to dry and then put them away first thing the next morning. When I have larger items like pans that I've washed, sometimes I will just leave them in the sink to dry if I don't have room where everything else is to put them in. That's what I did this morning when I cleaned the pan from our cookies the night before. I just left it in the sink to dry and then finished hand drying it 
once I was done with everything else. One of the main things I wanted to do on this day was to roast some potatoes because the potatoes that we had were starting to sprout and I didn't want them to go bad before we got them cooked. So we like to eat roasted potatoes sometimes with breakfast. We'll eat it with eggs or we'll eat them with some type of meat during the day. So it just makes an easy meal and it's something that I will cook a lot of times and they'll usually last in the refrigerator for about a week. So I decided to take the potatoes that we had and go ahead and roast some of them. I wasn't sure if I would be able to roast all of them or not because we had quite a few. So I knew I would do most of them this day, but still maybe have a couple left over um, that I needed to do something else with later. I preheated the oven to 400 degrees before starting the potatoes. I started by washing the potatoes. I just used water and then I used my hands to just scrub and then also to take off any of the eyelets that had been growing. Once my potatoes were washed, I used a clean, dry towel to dry them off. I want them to be as dry as possible when I get ready to roast them. When I cut my potatoes for roasting, I try to get them as close to the same size as possible, but I'm not overly concerned about it if some are a little bit bigger than others. I just try to make sure that there's not too much discrepancy in the size so they'll roast as evenly as possible. I like to put my potatoes in a mixing bowl to put the oil and seasonings. I know a lot of people will just go ahead and put them on the sheet pan and then oil and season the potatoes while they're in the sheet pan, but I feel like I'm able to get them mixed a lot better and not have to worry about things falling all over the place if I do it in a mixing bowl and it's not hard to clean the mixing bowl afterwards. For seasonings, I'm using extra virgin olive oil and then just salt, pepper. We like red pepper. In fact, in general, we like a lot of pepper. So you might see me go in a little heavy handed on that. Um, and it's because we do like a lot of both black pepper and red pepper. You wanna make sure you salt the potatoes pretty good. I'm also using some dried thyme and then a packet of some Italian seasonings that Whitney had gotten when he went to Italy. This is the first time I'm using those. So it's just a mix of, I think some oregano and a few other different Italian spices. I also had some fresh rosemary that I had bought at the grocery store. And when I bought it, I just thought it was a carton of rosemary and I didn't realize that it was the living rosemary, but it's turned out to be great because I had bought two boxes of it. And so now we have two little stalks 
of rosemary that I've been keeping in the kitchen and you just put a little bit of water at the bottom of the glass to keep it watered. We've been using these since quarantine started and we've been cutting them down and we do see that they're growing. So um, they're not growing that fast, but they are definitely growing some. So that's exciting and so hopefully it'll end up lasting us longer than we originally thought it would. After seasoning all of the potatoes, I just spread them out on my pans and I'm using two pans because you want to spread it out to where they're not touching each other. So you can see I put them on one pan just to kind of gauge how much I had and then I started spreading some onto the other pan as well. After I had both pans done, I realized that I had a little more room for a few more potatoes, so I ended up just washing and seasoning a few more potatoes and adding them to my pans. I put the potatoes in the oven and then I set my timer for 10 minutes. I never know exactly how long it's gonna take when I roast things like this. So what I'll typically do is set my timer for 10 minutes and that lets me know I need to check it because I'm gonna have to toss these every now and then anyway just to keep them from sticking to the pan and to make sure they get completely roasted. So I'll set it for 10 minutes and then check them and I end up having to do this a couple of times usually. I believe it ended up taking about 30 minutes total for these potatoes to be done. So by setting my timer for 10 minutes, I was able to check it and toss them a couple of times, which was perfect. So I was talking to you earlier about distractions and how I keep getting distracted every time I think I'm on track to do something. And this day, that's exactly what happened. That morning, Whitney needed me to fix his breakfast for him because he had meetings all day. And then the same with his lunch. And so as soon as I was putting everything away and thought I would have a little bit of time to get some other things done after putting the potatoes in the oven, Whitney came in and needed me to fix his lunch because he just had a short bit of time between meetings to be able to eat. So of course I went ahead and started making his lunch. He wanted me to make him a ham sandwich. We had gotten an order from Costco. We used Instacart a couple of days ago to get some things from Costco. And one of the things we bought was a spiral ham. In fact, we bought two of them because we like them and it's something that's already cooked and ready to go. And we already had some that I had bought earlier and put in the freezer. And we wanted one that we could freeze some more. And then we also wanted one that we could just go ahead and keep all of it in the refrigerator because we knew we would eat lunches and then sometimes we'll have ham with our eggs for breakfast, different things like that. So we knew if we kept one out, it would get eaten pretty quickly. As I was getting everything ready for Whitney's sandwich, my timer went off, so I checked the potatoes and gave them a toss, and I reset my timer for another 10 minutes. You'll see me here making him his ham sandwich 
and I wasn't gonna eat one myself, but as I was making his, he wanted his bread toasted and I had already started putting the mayo on it without toasting it, so I decided I would go ahead and eat that sandwich and make him another one with toasted bread. To toast the bread, I'm using my Breville toaster oven. We've had it for a while now. I asked my mom a couple years ago to get it for us for Christmas, and she did. And it is one of our most used kitchen appliances. I haven't talked to y'all about it before, but I really like it. Even though I use it all the time, it wasn't until the quarantine that we started using it to toast bread. We've used it a couple times now to toast our bread, and it seems to work really well. The only thing is it's a little bit small, whereas I could toast four slices of bread in the toaster but in my toaster oven I'm only able to do two slices at a time. They do make a larger version of this toaster oven but we were in our old house at the time and this was the size that we were able to fit in the space that we had. I mostly use the toaster oven for reheating things and I use it a lot for my lunches when I'm here by myself so before the quarantine I would typically have some type of leftover meat like maybe steak or chicken or something like that that I would heat up for lunch with some type of vegetable and I usually will just heat it on the tray in my toaster oven and it's really quick to reheat and then it's very easy to clean. It comes with a little tray and I just put everything on the tray, heat it up, and then it's only one little piece that I have to clean afterwards. If you've been thinking about getting a toaster oven, I would recommend it. I use this now way more than I ever use the microwave. just wanted mayo, mustard, ham, and cheese on his sandwich. But for my sandwich, I wanted to have some lettuce and I don't actually eat cheese on my sandwich. I used one and a half slices of cheese for Whitney's sandwich and then I ate the other half slice of cheese but I ate mine on the side. I know I'm kind of weird like that. I have this funny thing where I love cheese but I usually prefer it on the side rather than on my sandwiches or hamburgers and things like that. I washed the lettuce in one of the strainers that I already had out, but I used my salad spinner to dry the lettuce. The salad spinner is another one of my favorite kitchen tools. I love it, I use it all the time. It took such a long time for me to ever break down and get one, and then when I did, I couldn't imagine what I had ever done without it. During lunch, I decided to just take a break and watch a video. I recently discovered Terry Seville Foy. It was the weirdest thing. One of my followers that I've become friends with had first told me about her. And then um, also some of the other YouTubers that I follow and am friends with. Um, I heard a couple of them talking about her and I was like, okay, that must be a sign. So I've checked her out and I really enjoy her videos. So a lot of times at lunch, I will pull up and just watch one of her videos while I'm eating my lunch. I just find them inspiring and something good. I have not been watching a lot of TV or video during this quarantine at night Whitney and I will watch a TV show but in general I haven't been watching a lot of TV I haven't had time because I've just had other things that I needed to focus on like getting my house in order and trying to make videos for y'all so I do enjoy this time when I'm eating my lunch if I'm by myself like I was on that day and Whitney's not eating with me that particular day then I do like to just take that time and watch a video or two and just kind of relax and while I was doing that my mom also texted me so you'll see that I was texting back and forth with her a little bit also during that time.
When I cook or do anything, even like make a sandwich or something, I like to put things away and try to clean as I go. But this day there was so much going on, Whitney needed his sandwich quickly because he had such a short window of time to be able to eat it. And then I had the potatoes going and other things going on. I decided to just leave all of the things out and I would just put things away and clean once I was done eating. And it was hard to sit there and see all of that stuff sitting out and still relax while I was eating, but I did manage to do it. While I was eating, my alarm went off for the potatoes, so I checked them and they were ready, so I took them out of the oven. They were just sitting there cooling off while I ended up cleaning everything else. Because there was so much going on in the kitchen this day, I was just worried about cleaning the dishes. I wasn't spending the time, you know, wiping down all the cabinets and everything. I may have wiped a little bit just where some of the food was, but I didn't, this wasn't a big kitchen clean where I was wiping down and really cleaning the whole kitchen. I wanted to get the kitchen back in order and get everything put away so it was ready to go when we were ready to start dinner and I wasn't sure when that would be. I knew Whitney was gonna be cooking and I wasn't totally sure what his schedule was so um, I just wanted to make sure everything was ready and put away when he was ready. Just as I was getting everything put away and I was feeling low, oh, great, I'm gonna have some time now and I'm gonna go do some other things. I was gonna, um, actually I was gonna start editing this video and then I had a couple of other things that I wanted to do. Um, cleaning wise, I was gonna go and do a little cleaning in the bathroom and maybe a little bit of vacuuming. But um, little did I know, we were about to get another surprise. So I heard the doorbell ring and I knew when it rang that it was probably the shipment that we were expecting to come of some goodies from Louisiana. Every time we move, we always order some of our Cajun favorites from Louisiana, things that we can't get other places. And it doesn't matter where we've lived, even when we lived in Alaska, we did the same thing. We'd either ship it ourselves or we would have it shipped. Everything we bought was frozen. We had some sausage, some boudin, and some crawfish, my favorite. All of these items were frozen, so I'm just bringing them inside. We have hot sausage, mild sausage. So this is the Savoise brand, which we do like. It's not our favorite brand from our hometown but it's our go-to brand that you can get anywhere because the place where we really like it doesn't ship. So we were able to get this shipped from Don's Specialty Markets. Um, if you don't know them, if you are from Louisiana, you've probably heard of Don's before, but if not, Don's is online if you wanna order something. So you can see we got some food in, and then we ended up getting, I believe, six pounds of crawfish. And they're still frozen, you can see and Louisiana crawfish. Guys, you can't beat that. So I'm so excited. I can see maybe some gumbo and some crawfish etouffee in my future. I left the big box and styrofoam ice chest that they came in with the dry ice outside by the door because I didn't want to bring that into my house. Um, and then I just brought in all of the different boxes and I did just set it on the countertop. I didn't put a towel down because I knew immediately after I was gonna disinfect everything.
Now I did label the different things because we had two different types of sausage, a mild flavored sausage and then a hot sausage. And then we also had the boudin that I wanted to label. So I just used my marker and I'm labeling all the things and then I put it away in the freezer. And once I was done with that, I went back and I made sure that I disinfected everything. I wasn't too worried about the boxes with the stuff, so I didn't disinfect that, but I did wipe down and disinfect all of my surfaces afterwards. I disinfected um, the sink, the countertops, I disinfected my pen, and when you're disinfecting things, you wanna make sure that you're using a wipe or a spray or whatever it is, you want it to get very wet, and then you wanna make sure it stays that way until it dries. So normally, when I'm just wiping down and cleaning my countertops, you'll see me come back with another rag where I come back and dry it so it doesn't streak afterwards, but when I'm disinfecting, I do not come back and wipe it down. I leave it there until it dries and even some of the surfaces that I disinfected if I touch them in between before it was completely dry I will go back and disinfect it again I spent a good bit of time making sure that I disinfected everything where all of this food had touched so the countertops and the faucets any door handles the refrigerator handles inside and outside um, so I went through and made sure that I did all of that and again was getting very excited because my kitchen was finally looking clean. I thought again that I was going to be able to move on and start doing some of the other things that I needed to do and by this point it was already like 3.30 in the afternoon and no sooner had I started filming the portion of this video where I was gonna show you how the kitchen countertops were clean and I had taken care of all of the dishes and put everything away, then Whitney walks in and says he's ready to start cooking supper. So he was gonna cook some smothered pork chops and some sausage since the sausage had just come in. He decided to cook that that night for supper and we had already defrosted the pork chops and had that ready to go. So he came in and started cooking now it was all good because when he cooks I do the cleaning I ended up staying in the kitchen and cleaning up as he was cooking and it ended up being okay but my point is is that if you are feeling like you're in the same spot where you keep trying to get things done yet you keep getting disrupted and you're just not able to get through all of your to-do list please give yourself some grace right now and know that these days are different than what we're used to. And even though I'm almost three weeks into my quarantine right now, it's still a challenge and it's gonna be, and every day looks different than the day before. So please just give yourself some grace for that and know that things at some point will get back to normal. And right now we just can make the best of the situation that we're in. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really does help out my channel and it also lets me know that you like this type of video and might be interested in seeing more of them. And also, if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so you'll be in the know when my new videos come out. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you are staying home and staying safe. You're all on my mind and in my heart right now. I wish you nothing but the best and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.